Welcome to the Heavy Spoiler Show. I'm your host, Paul, and you didn't see that coming, did you? Well, you probably did if you watched the leaks. But like me, I can imagine that a lot of you were still mind blown by the big reveal that the MCU is now crossing the multiverse. Throughout this video, we're going to be breaking down some of the big questions, giving our theories on what's going on, and a lot more. There will be heavy spoilers here, so if you haven't had a chance to check out episode 5 of WandaVision, then I suggest you take it from the top and go and watch it. Please click the thumbs up button if you enjoy the video, and make sure you subscribe for breakdowns like this each and every day. Without the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into the breakdown. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is why Monica's readings are not showing up on the chart. If you already know the answer, then the time codes are below, but we pretty much know that she's now going to be exactly in line with her comic book counterpart. In the Marvel Universe, she's a superhero who goes under the pseudonym Photon, which is of course the nickname that her mother had in the Air Force. Photon has several powers and abilities and can fly, fire powerful boats, and also change her appearance. This skill set has of course been demonstrated in the Hex, especially the shape shifting that we've seen not only in the environment, but also the characters themselves. Monica is the only one other than Wanda who has left the Hex. It's likely that when she was tossed out, the membrane mixed with the reality stone powers that were enveloping her changed her physiology. Now in the promotional posters for the show, we can actually see what looks like it might be Photon's uniform. This black and white costume likely highlights that Monica will be donning it at some point and she may even return to the Hex when it's fully modernised and be given this uniform upon entering. As for Sword and General, they seem a lot more nefarious the more we learn about them and I think we're starting to get more of an idea of what it is exactly that they're doing. During the briefing scene, acting director Hayward states that Vision said in his will that he was not to be turned into a weapon. However, in the CCTV footage, we can see a lot of people in lab coats experimenting on him and they could have actually been going against his wishes. Wanda demonstrates amnesia over what happened before Westview and it is possible that she was actually stopping them from salvaging parts from her husband to make a doomsday device. We know that under Hayward's direction that sort of stopped looking to the stars and their mission statement has changed to focus more on worldly problems. Therefore, they could also be developing weapons, similar to what S.H.I.E.L.D. were doing in the Avengers. Though we did theorise that Hayward is actually Mephisto in another video that you should definitely check out, there is another theory that comes from Yash Arya. He pointed out that using the letters of Hayward's name, you can spell out Hydra and the villainous organisation have been laced throughout Wanda's past and of course this series. Perhaps they never stop spying on her, and though it would be a bit cliche, they may have infiltrated S.W.O.R.D. in the same way that they snuck into S.H.I.E.L.D. That is of course just a theory, but there are a lot of red flags when it comes to Hayward. Monica was of course supposed to ascend to being the director of the organisation, but because she was snapped, she was unable to fill the shoes of her mother, and thus he has stepped in and derailed the agency quite a lot. He may of course be a misdirect, but I still feel like something more sinister is going on with him. Though the episode seems to be pointing all guns at Wanda literally, I don't think she's the one doing it at all. In the closing scene of the episode before Quicksilver arrives, she asks if Vision really thinks that she's the one behind it and can't even remember how she got there. Wanda states that if she was running it all, then she'd have to make sure that people go to dentist appointments and so on, which definitely feels out of her range of abilities. There is a moment in the entry when Vision snaps Norma out of the hypnosis for a second and he heavily implies that she's behind it all. However, he never says Wanda and if we just take the word she, it could apply to both Agnes and Dottie. The former seems to know exactly what's going on in the town due to her awareness of taking things from the top and the latter of course runs things in Westview. We know Westview doesn't have any children in it either, and shout outs to Rohit Matiani for pointing out that Agnes said kids can't be controlled. Though she was just talking about Billy and Tommy in general, I think this shows that she is aware of the mechanics of the hex itself and what can and can't be done there. Children are likely not in it because they would blow the lid on the entire thing, and this little line of dialogue does highlight what's going on. Thus, I think Wanda is not really doing it at all, she's just being set up as a patsy so that she can be taken out by S.W.O.R.D. or the Avengers and the real villains can swoop in and steal her kids. Hide your wife, hide your kids because Agnes seems to have her eyes on them and personally I believe that Wanda went to her as a way to learn how to improve her abilities. 
Agnes likely is tied in with the Dark Lord Mephisto himself, and thus the pair may have decided to create a reality that would convince Wanda to have children in order to take them. Because of their parents, they would be extremely powerful, and thus, if given the right guidance, they could help the pair take over the world. Children were clearly subliminally planted into Wanda's head, and if you watch episode 2 with the thought process that the entire thing is a setup to make her create them, then the episode itself has a much deeper meaning. Now as for how Wanda brought Vision back to life, I don't think that she did at all. When it comes to the dog, it's clear that she's unable to resurrect the dead, and Agnes even questions whether she has the powers to reanimate its corpse. This line was clearly put in for a reason, and I think that it hammers home the idea that it was in fact someone else. Now the work itself is based heavily upon the Vision and Scarlet Witch graphic novel from 1985, which features the Grim Reaper. His helmet was also shown in episode 2, and it is possible that he was the reason that Vision was able to be brought back from the dead. Or they could have just charged his batteries, but you never know. Now as for Evan Peters' Quicksilver arriving at the end, this of course carries a lot with it. I did have a couple of comments saying that you could see Mephisto's hand in the window before he arrived, but if we look closely, it's actually just Vision's purple head reflecting in the glass. Not that kind of purple head, you dirty bad boy. Anyway, this is definitely Quicksilver, as if you listen to the scene with the audio description on, you will hear the narrator say that it's the one from the X-Men films. I kind of feel like what's happening here is that Wanda wished to have her brother brought back, and she made a deal with the devil, but this has had a monkey's poor effect, and instead, it's brought back the one who wasn't dead. Aaron Taylor Johnson's would of course be a rotting corpse at this point, and thus it makes more sense to just pluck one from another timeline. Now I have seen some say that this might actually be Mephisto himself, and that could be the case. However, I feel like Feige is going to be bringing across a lot of the X-Men from the other franchises, and if he's doing this on a grand scale, he probably doesn't want to ruin the first one with a fake out and make it someone else. I'm not going to talk about the leaks for the next episode in depth, but if you've seen them, you'll know that Quicksilver has quite a smart mouth in it, and this reminded me a lot of the scene in Days of Future Past, in which he was kind of making jabs at people every chance he could. Now, hex points have popped up at several points in the MCU, and they are often used as a way to travel through space. If we think of this on a grander scale, it could actually mean that they can be used to travel across dimensions, and Westview itself may indeed be a way to bring all the Fox characters across. I love how everyone has been asking Feige if he's going to recast the X-Men for years, and he's just been like, no, I don't think I will. One day, we might actually get that Hugh Jackman return, but we will of course have to see. Now on top of all this, it is actually possible that Reed Richards, aka the head of the Fantastic Four, is already in the MCU. Monica mentioning that she knows an aerospace engineer definitely fits the bill of one of the Richards, and this could mean that we will be getting the first family of Marvel a lot sooner than we thought. It was theorised that they might be the astronauts adrift in space, but Monica saying this actually makes a lot more sense. Now it could easily be Sue too, or even maybe Victor Von Doom, depending on how they handle the character. Just thought I'd add that, that bit in the end there, just before it kicks off. Now the tease towards them came with Monica discussing a way to get back into the hex, and that she would be doing it in a vehicle, which we know from the trailers does get built. So a big character may even pop up very soon, I just hope that the cast of Fant Four Stick aren't sat waiting for that call from Feige. Their movie is of course coming very soon, and John Watts is actually going to direct their first outing after he finishes up Spider-Man 3. So they are definitely on the cards, and whilst I don't know if this will be read or not, it is a cool little detail. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the theories, so if you have any then make sure you comment below and let me know. As a thank you for interacting with the video, you'll be entered into a prize draw on the 28th of February in which we're giving away 3 copies of the Marvel Phase 3 4K box set to our subscribers. All you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the theories. The winners of last month's competition are on screen right now, so that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of the 5th episode, which will be linked on screen right now. I'll also leave the Mephisto theory link there if you want to check it out, as we cover a lot more ground than what's in this one. With that out of the way, thank you for sticking through the video. I've been Paul, and I'll see you next time, yeah? You take care. Peace.